Hello guys, this is the Med Dude and today we're doing January 2021 Physics Unit 1. So let's get right to it. So question number one. A car is moving toward the stop sign at a speed of 25 meters per second. So that's our initial speed. So just write that down. The driver applies the brakes 20 meters before the sign and decelerates uniformly to rest. So this is our V. So it's, you know, uh, rest. That's zero meters per second. Which of the following gives the magnitude of the car deceleration in meters per second? Okay, so what do we have? So let's just put SUVAT. So what do we have here? So let's see what we have here. So we have S. S is 20, right? And we have U is 25. We have V, which is zero. E, A, we don't know, right? Because they want us to find out the deceleration. So A is what we want to find out. Do we have time? No, we don't. So we can just cast it out. So the only equation that goes with this that does not have a t in it is it it is v squared equals u squared plus 2as so all we have to do is substitute our values in so that will be 0 equals 25 squared plus 2a times 20. now it does tell you that it's decelerating now decelerating means that it is negative right this means it's negative. So what we can do, we can do is 0 equals 25 squared. We can have, it should be plus 40, 20 times 2 is 40, times minus A, right? So let's let's calculate. So now we have to make A the subject. So 25 squared e minus 40A. Then we can move the 40A to the other side. So that becomes 40A equals 25 squared. So A equals 25 squared all over 40 so that is the magnitude right so what we can do is we can see which one which option has that answer so you can see here that is c so that is the answer so question number two an object of mass so mass 8.2 kilograms okay so we know that initially at rest so u equals zero okay Follow the vertical distance of 25 meters per second. So S is 25. You know, we should always we should always write stuff down what we have given. And the final velocity is 20. So V is 20 meters per second. Alright. So which of the following gives the energy in joules that is dissipated by air resistance? So we need to find out the energy dissipated in air resistance, right? So what does it actually mean? So they're saying so that we have an object that's following uh, uh, falling through the air right the the total energy done right the energy that that we, we can we can know that that it's it's all of the energy it's our potential energy right mgh we know this is the work done on the mass right this is the work done on the object so we know this is the total energy now we also know there's also another energy that's the half mv squared right half mv squared which is the kinetic energy now that's the one affected by a resistance right because it slows down the velocity right so that means if we were to take the difference of of these two energies we would get the joules dissipated so we'd get we'd get the energy that is dissipated so all we have to do now is to find out what what do we have to find we have to find out mgh right take away a half m v squared that's it so we'll, so we can just write this down so m is what so 8.2 g is 9.81 9.81 times 25 minus half what's m 8.2 and v is you can see here as a final velocity of 20 so that's the v we're looking at so 20 squared so now we have to look at which one has this. So it's not A because, you know, we, we do not have the half mv squared. Let's look at this 0 0.5 times 8.2 times 20 squared. It's plus. No, we want a subtraction, a difference. So this is 8.2 times 9.81 times 25. Yep. Minus 0 0.5, 8.2 times 20 squared. Yep. So this is the answer. C is the answer. Okay. So question number three. So the graph shows how the acceleration of a of an object varies with time, right? So you can see over here this graph, right? You can see that this is uh, the acceleration is increasing. It's still it's still positive. It's still increasing. 
it's still increasing still increasing it it is still increasing so so the acceleration is still increasing but at a, at a decreasing rate towards the end right so that's the key thing it's 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 increasing but at a decreasing rate okay so which of the following graphs shows the velocity how it varies with t so because it's increasing it should it should be if the, if it should be it, it should be increasing it should be increasing right it should be positive right so we can cancel out a right we can cancel out a because it's you know this is negative negative a we a negative acceleration what about b what about this you can see over here the velocity is not increasing it's 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 over here you can see here that a is decreasing which is not the case right this is not the case so a is decreasing in this case and that's not what's happening right so that's out what about c this is linear a is constant a is constant that's not what we want we want something that's increasing so that's d right because you can see over here the velocity is increasing exponentially so that means that our 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 acceleration is also increasing right so then that's what's happening here so the, our final answer is d all right question number four a student measures the time taken t so I'm taking t uh, for a ball, bear, uh, ball bearing to fall different measured distances s from rest. Okay, the student uses measurements to plot a graph with the gradient equal to acceleration due to gravity. Okay, uh, which of the rows uh, of the table shows a graph with an equal with a gradient equal to g? All right, so we know that they're saying the gradient, right? So they're saying the key thing is the gradient, right? Which is what it's it's usually y over x right the change in y over change in x they're saying this is equal to g right this should equal to g now what do we have here what do we have what 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 do you think we can do here you can see over here that if you look at if you remember one of the equations the kinematic equation of motion it's if we have s equals ut plus half a t squared and you can see here what we're trying to do here we have different s and you can see our rest so this is zero right we, we throw it from rest so that's zero so we're left with s equals half so a going down is g right so we have half g t squared right so all we have to do is just rearrange to find g so that means it will be 2s all over t squared that gives us g so that means this is our corresponding y and this is our corresponding x that we need to find in our options right so let's see what's that so y should be 2s so that's no so that's 2s no no what about g g needs to be t squared so t squared t squared and you can see the only one that only option that has two ticks is b so our final answer is b question number five a student is investigating is investigating a material in the form of a wire which of the following properties of the wire will change if a longer wire is used now the key thing here is that they're saying the properties of the wire of the wire not the material okay so not the material right and it also it's also talking about what will change if the wire is longer right so they're talking about a change in dimension right they're talking about something that being changed but the only thing that's being changed is the dimension right I don't think that's being changed the dimension now a breaking stress this is not a property that will change if it's longer right it, it won't change the density won't change either right the young modulus is of the material right it won't change it will stay the same regardless of whether it's longer or shorter so the only thing that will change it's it's stiffness right so that's that's the only thing that will change regardless of the dimension so that's why c is the answer so all of these three, you can say all these three, so you can say over here, these don't change, they're independent of the dimensions, independent, independent of dimension. All right, so question number six, so two objects, so we have two objects, so two objects are traveling towards each other, so traveling towards each other. So we have two objects here so we can call this object a so this is object a and we have a so it's a mass of two kilograms two kilograms and it initially traveling to the right so if we put this is this if this is our positive 
positive if we're assuming the right is positive so this is traveling at three meters per second right and then we have object b we have object b we have object b and that's the mass of so that's b that's five kilograms right and that's initially traveling to the left so left we're saying this will be negative so because we're assuming we're taking right as positive so i'll just write right as positive so left will be negative so at minus two meters per second right so this is before the collision right this is so this is before collision right so what is the total momentum of a and b after the collision right so first we need to find out what's the momentum of A and B, right? So A, so we know P is what? P is MV, right? So let's find out the momentum of A. So that will be two times three. So that will be six kg meters per second. What about, and this is to this, this side. What about P, what about momentum of B, object B? So five times two, so that will be 10 kg meters per second meters per second but we're going this direction right so what now what now what now we need we know that momentum is a vector right so the direction matters so if we're going in this direction that means the six will be so six in this direction and ten this direction the total net the right or the total will be four in this direction so this will be four kg meters per second in this direction right so that means our total momentum after collision so after collision or ac after collision is going to be four kilogram meters per second to the right to the right so that means our final answer is b right to the right to the right or to the left sorry sorry, sorry. to to the left this is left not right to the left. So final answer is to the left. All right. Question number seven. A student determines so a student determines the terminal velocity of a ball bearing as it falls through the oil. He releases the ball bearing at point V. So he releases it here, and measures the time taken for it to fall and measured distance. So which two points? should he use for the measured distance now he's trying to find out so the, the main, main thing is he's trying to find out terminal velocity that's the key that's the key thing here they're trying to find out now terminal velocity we can't find out at w at v obviously because it hasn't even entered the oil so v is already out of the equation right so anything with v we can just cancel out so a, a is already out we can't use w because it has just the the object has the ball has just entered entered the oil and the forces are unbalanced right it's it has it hasn't reached terminal velocity it has just entered oil so that's why w is also not considered so anything with w we don't consider so w we don't consider so that means c is the answer so we are left with x and y this would give us according to this this would give us the best approximate terminal velocity right because this is this is where you'd reach term of velocity and why we can clearly see where y is. That is the answer. Question number eight. So which of the following is a vector quantity, right? So density is scalar, right? It's scalar. We don't have a direction. Kinetic energy, energy is always scalar, right? We can see if we can, if you remember from question six that we just did over here, the direction matters a lot, right? So that means this is our vector, right? So this is our vector. So you can remember from question six, this is our vector. So this is momentum, this is the answer. Question number nine. So which of the following statements is not correct, is not correct for a Newton's third law pair of forces? So which is not correct, right? Which is not correct. So that means they're asking for, they're asking for a statement which is true for non-Newton third pair of laws. So basically, we can just cancel out anything that's the Newton third uh, third law pair of forces. So the forces act in opposite directions. That is true for Newton third law. The forces act on the same body. No, they don't. They don't because if if I'm over here, right, and I I and I push the door, right. If I'm pushing the door, right, the door is going to exert the same force back to me, 
as I'm opening the door, right? As I'm pushing the door, right? So that means they don't act on the same body. So that, so we can say this is not correct. So this should be the answer. We can just double check C and D now. The forces of the same type, that is correct, right? Push and pull, same same type of forces. What about the force have the same magnitude? That is correct. So if I apply the same amount of force, for if, if I apply nine newtons on the body, on the door, the door will apply nine newtons back to me as a reaction force. Same magnitude. Sorry, same mag. That is correct. All right. So B is the answer. Question number ten. A locomotive pulls a train at a constant speed against a force of eight. 8,400 kilonewtons, right? So that's the same thing as saying 8,400 times 1,000, 10, 10 cube, right? The output power of the locomotive is 70 million, 70 megawatts, right? Megawatts. So that will be what? 70 times 10 to the power of 6 watts. And this is newtons. Which of the following gives the time in seconds for the locomotive to pull the train of a distance of a kilometer? So that's a thousand meters, right? All right. We need to remember that we can, we know, if we know the power, right? If we know the power of this, if we know the power, we can work out the time, right? Because what's power? Power is the rate, you know, rate of work being done, right? So that's the same thing as saying what? Same thing as saying force times velocity right and we know from this we know velocity is what velocity is distance over time right or displacement over time so our power same thing as saying f so if we were to substitute this back into this so we will get s over t so now we can use this right now we can use this we know that the output power of this is what it's 70 times 10 to the power of 6 equals what we know the force the force is 8400 times 10 to the power of 3 right times what's the distance the distance is a thousand so we can just write a thousand 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 meter right what about the time taken do we know the time taken we don't we want to work that out right that's t we want to work that out so let's move t to the other side so we get t equals 8400 right times 10 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 3 that's also 10 to the power of 3 all over 70 times 10 to the power of 6 now you can see over here that this is the answer right so we need to find something that has 7 times 10 to the power of 7 we need to find something that's similar to this in the denominator now we can simplify this and put it in a standard form so that will be 7 times 10 to the power of 7 right we know this and we know 8,400 is the same thing as saying 8.4 times 10 to the power of 3, right? We know this. So if we just put it here, 8.4 times 10 to the power of 3, times 10 to the power of 3, times 10 to the power of 3. So which one is this, is the same as this? So it's not A, it's not B. It could be C. Is it D? It's not D. So it has to be C because you can see a 7 times 10 to the power 7 is the same as ours. 8.4 times 10 to the power 6. This is the same thing as 8.4 times 10 to the power 3 times 10 to the power 3. That's the same. And then times 10 to the power 3 at the end. The same thing. Because when you have the same powers and, and bases, they add up. So this will be the same thing as saying 8.4 times 10 to the power of 6 times 10 to the power of 3. It'll be the same thing. So the final answer is C. All right. Question number 11. So we have a uniform plank of 4 meters is pivoted 0 0.9 meters from one end. The weight of the plank is 250 newtons. So that is important. So the weight is... A, it's a unit. So the main thing here is they tell you it's a uniform plank. That means at 2 meters over here we have we have 250 newtons acting on the body so if we have 250 newtons acting on the body okay a person of weight 950 stands on one end of the plank so this is the one end of the plank so we're just gonna do this so this will be 950 the person of weight 650 stands at a distance of x from the pivot so this is that person right so if we this is 650 newtons 
for the pivot so the weight is in equilibrium as shown. Add to the diagram to show the forces acting on the plank. Also, we've already done this, so we get one, you know, we get we get one mark for showing the weight and the other mark to show both the person's weight. So we got that, so that's fine. Now we need to work out, we have the part B says calculate the distance x, right? So calculate the distance x. So what do you have to do? To calculate moments, if you if you remember, we have to do what we have to do clockwise, have to do clockwise, clockwise moment equals anti clockwise right anti-clockwise right so which one is clockwise you can see the distance the force over here are at the anti and are the clockwise motion and this one's the anti-clockwise this one is anti all right so we can do that so our anti-clockwise movement is 0 0.9 meters times 950 950 newtons right that's pretty simple right what about something else it's from the pivot, right? So we know this is from the pivot, it's x and 650. So we can do it here, we can do it here again. So this will be 0 0.9 times 950 is our anti-clockwise equals. So we have 650 newtons times x. So that's the distance here plus. So what's the distance here? We need to work out the distance from here to here, right? So we can go down. So this we know is two meters from here and it's two meters from the other side as well, right? It's two meters. So that means that this is 2 meters, so this total distance is 2 meters. All you have to do is subtract 0 0.9 from it, so 2 take away 0 0.9, that will give us 1.1 meter. So that is our 1.1 meter. So this will be 1.1 times, so times 6, not 650, 250, so that's the weight, so 1.1 times 250. So now all we have to do, all we have to do is work out what x is now, so that will be, so 950 times 0 0.9, is 855 and then we have 650x 650x plus 275 all right so now we can put some 275 on the other side so we will get 580 equals 650x so x will be 580 all over 650 so that will be 0 0.892 all right but is this the correct level of accuracy or is it not we need we need to work that out it's not because you can see over here that they round it to 0 0.90 they're under 2 dp so we have to be consistent with that so our final answer is going to be x equals 0 0.89 meters to be consistent right so that's the answer all right so question number 12. moving walkways are often found in airports one moving walkway carries passengers up an incline of 30 degrees as shown. All right. A single mass of 72. So this is M. So M equals 72, right? The speed of the walkway. So this is if we, if we take this. So if we take this, this is our, our walkway. This is U equals 0 0.51, right? Show that the rate of at which the walkway does work, right? A walkway does work is about 200 watts, right? Okay, so what do we need to know? How, how do we work this out? How do we work this out? We have V, right? We have V or U, we have the speed. What else can we do with this? We remember from the previous question, the multiple choice, we know that power is the same thing as F times V, right? We can work that out, right? We know what V is, right? We know what V is. We know what V is, right? It's this. It's in this direction. What about the passenger? What's what's the force acting on the passenger? We know that if the passenger is here or or anywhere along this, it's it has a weight, right? It has mg, right? And if we were to project it in this direction, because we have an angle, this would be mg sine theta, right? Right, mg sine theta. So the force we're actually trying to use for this Fv over here is mg sine theta. So we can work that out. We can we can work it out now, right? Can't we? So power, the rate will be F. So what's mg sine theta? It will be seventy two times nine point eight one times sine thirty times zero point five one, which is our velocity, right? So. 
So let's put in the calculator, 72 times 9.81 times sine 30 times 0 0.51, we get 180.1 watts. Okay, is this the final answer? No, because we need to give the answer so that when we round, we get 200. So we can say the power is 180 watts. To be consistent with this, the rounding, it's very important to be consistent. Or else, or else we wouldn't get the last mark of our A1, right? So this is the final answer. So I can just put this here, that's the final answer here. All right, so the walkway system has an efficiency of 78%, okay? So 78%, what else? Calculate the power input to the system when 15 passengers of average 72 mass are standing on the walkway. So in order for us to do this, we need to know efficiency, right? Efficiency is what? Percent efficiency is what? The formula is usually what? It's useful, it's useful power, right? The useful, useful power over power in, right? The power input. So I'm just gonna power input. All right, so what do we know about this? We know that the, Efficiency is 78%, right? So we can write 0 0.78, right? What about the useful power? We know the useful power from the previous question. We know the power at rate, we know the rate already, right? We know the power already. It's 180 watts, right? We can use, the, we have to use the previous equation to help us. That'll be one a previous question. So 180, but that was for a single passenger, right? So we have, we have 15 of those, so times by 15. And all over the power input, right? So what now? We have to now rearrange, rearrange to find what power input is. So now let's we put this in the calculator. So 180 times 15, that's the same thing as saying. So 0 0.78 equals 2,700 over power n. This is going to power n. Now we just rearrange, right? So we put this up and 0 0.78 down. So that will be that will be power in put will be 2700 all over 0 0.78. So once you do that, so 2700 all over 0 0.78, this will give us 3461.5 watts. Okay, what do we do now? So do we, how do we round it? How do, how do we round it? We go back to the question at hand, right? We go back to the question. The question gives us, you know, the question before you can see over here, this was 200 watts, right? 200 watts. And you can see over here, we're using two, two significant figures here, two significant figures here, two significant figures here. So we have, it's best to round it to sig fig, right? So that will be what? So that will be 3,500 watts so that's our final answer all right so question number 13 so a rugby player a rugby player kicks the ball off the ground right kicks the ball off the ground at an angle 35 degrees to the horizontal the ball reaches a maximum height before of five meters so this is one this is what one this is when v is zero right a height of five meters before returning to the ground. So we have to show, we have to show that the initial speed is about 17. So if this is U, right? So we know this is U cos 35, right? In the horizontal direction. And we know that in this direction, we have the, the, the vertical direction, we have U sine 35, right? In the Y, y direction, right? So, what do we know? What can we use in this equation? The only information we have is that it reaches the maximum of five meters when it's at its highest point, right? So if we use the vertical component, right, we can work out what u is, right? How? So if we just do suvat, right? Suvat again, so suvat. We know it in the vertical direction, s is five. When we do we know what u is? Yeah, we do. We know it's u sine 35. That's the y component we're looking at the y right now what about v we know v 
is zero, right? From this, we know V is zero. So this would be zero. What about A? We know it's minus 9.81, minus G, right? So minus G, right? So that's the same thing as saying minus 9.81. Because that's the only acceleration acting on the rugby. So if this was the rugby ball over here, that's the only thing acting on on the on the ball, right? That's the only put and the only acceleration it's having. What about time? Do we have time? We don't. So we're looking at an equation that does not have time. So that equation is what? That equation is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So now all we have to do is substitute in our values, right? So this will be 0 equals u sine 35 squared plus 2 minus, I'm just going to write minus g times 5, right? So that is, so that if we, if we simplify it, so that will be 0 equals, so I'm just going to keep it as u sine 35 squared minus 10 gs. So now all we have to do is rearrange to find what u is now. So we put the 10 gs to the other side. Sorry, 10, not 10 gs, it's uh, 10 g because 5 times 2 is 10. Move to the other side becomes becomes 10 g equals u sine 30, 35 squared. So now we have to square root 10 g, right? 10 g equals u sine 35 sine 35 so our u is root of 10 times 9.81 all over sine 35 so now when you put in the calculator so root 10 times 9.81 over sine 35 gives us 17.27 meters per second okay so is this our final answer? It's not because we need to show that the initial speed is about 17. So we need to round it to one more figure than what we need to show. So, right? so we need to always, always, always round to one, one more SF than we need to show, than we need to show we need to show so that in that case so you will be so we, this will be our final answer will be 17.3 meters per second right so, so that, will, that will be our 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 answer so that will be an answer our answer so that's our answer so we have u is 17.17.3 17 three meters per second all right so that's it question part b after traveling after traveling a horizontal distance of 22.0 meters right 22 .0 meters what do you do then the, to score the ball must be more than three meters above the ground three meters above the ground when it reaches the goal Deduce whether an initial speed of 17 meters per second is sufficient to score, right? So for that, we need to know what? We need to first know the time, the time taken, time taken to reach 22.0 meters, right? How do we do that? We have to use the, the horizontal component to find the time, right? To find the time. So we know the horizontal component is u cos 35, right? And we know u is 17, so 17 cos 35. So we know that. Okay, that's good. So we know that velocity is speed over time, right? So this is speed over time, right? We know the speed is 22. 22, sorry, not speed, sorry, the distance. So this is t equals 17 cos 35, right? So t equals, t equals, 22 over 17 cos 35. So this is the time. The time is 1.58 seconds. So we know the time now. We need to find out what? We need to find out the vertical height, right? So we need, we need to find vertical height. Vertical height at what? At 1.58 seconds. And then if it's above 3, 
we can say this is this is sufficient if it's not then it then we can say it's not sufficient so we have to do su vat again so what equation do we have to use so s u v a t best method to do it we want to work out the s so that's true we do know what u is yeah we know what u is the vertical component we know it's u sine 35 from previous you can check again you know we know it's it's seven so if i were to remove this so it's 17 17 sine 35 all right what about velocity do we know the final velocity no we don't we don't know the final velocity do we know a yeah we know it's vertical so minus g is acting on it so that's good what about t we know what t is 1.58 so the only equation that we can use to find s will be will be this equation so s equals u t plus half a t squared so all we have to do is substitute so s equals b 17 sine 35 times 1.58 plus a half so minus 9.81 times 1.58 squared right so when you put in the color so 17 sine 35 times 1.58 plus a half times minus 9.81 times 1.58 squared this gives us 3.16 meters so this means that the ball is above three point is three meters so it's above three meters at 1.8558 seconds so that means that this means that 17 meters per second is sufficient sufficient to score all right so that means it's score. So let let's look at the five marks here. So you get one you get one mark for stating it's two point one six meter. One mark for the ending to the conclusion. One mark for using the formula and writing it down. So that's three already. And one mark for getting to one point five eight seconds. And one mark for using the horizontal component to find out the total time taken uh, to reach that distance. Those are our five marks that we need. All right. Question number 14. So we have the foot the foot the photograph shows. So the photograph shows a fireboat used, right? A fireboat used to put off fires on ships at sea. A pump fixed to the boat pumps water from the sea. The sea water is projected at high speed out of a pipe connected to a pump. So that this is the picture. So the mass, so they're telling you, so let's just look. So the mass M is 300. Mass 300, the pipe has a diameter of 10 centimeters, so that's the same thing as saying 0 0.1 meter, and the radius will be 0 0.05 meters, just in case we need it later. Density is uh, 1030 kilo kilograms per meter cube. So show that at the speed, show that the speed at which the seawater is projected is about 37 meters per second. So we have to show that the speed is 37 meters per one second right so we can take our t as one right if we if we need to because in order for us to know this we need to know we, we need to show how do you find out speed speed is what it's usually speed is what speed is what is usually displacement over time right right and how do we work out displacement we only have density we have mass and we have a diameter of the pipe right what can we do with that information? What can we do with that information to get our speed, right? How can we do that? We can split these two into two parts, these two variables. So that's the same thing as saying one over T times S. This is just a length, right? This is just a length, right? And we know we can find, we know that this is the same thing as saying, so this is the hard part. So this is the hard part is, is understanding that volume over the area gives us length, right? Volume over the area gives us length. So that means we can substitute this for this, right? So let's see how we would do that. So so let's use let's use the information we have. So we have density equals mass times volume, right? We have that, right? So that, what what do we do with that? We need to find out the volume, right? So volume will be mass over density. So that will be what? So that will be 300 all over 1030, right? So this is our volume, right? So this will be 0 0.291, right? This will be 0 0.291. This is our, our volume, okay? So it's going to be meter cubed. 
What about the area? We know the area is pi r squared. So pi r squared. So we know pi, and we know area is, is 0 0.05. Early we did that. So that is what? Pi times 0 0.05 squared, right? So this gives us what? So when we put the calculator, we get what? We get 7.85 times 10 to the power of negative three, right? So we got that. Now what do we do with the information? What do we do with the information? We can now substitute this into S. So our, our V should be, so one over T, right? Times V over A, the same thing as L. We have said this is L, same thing. So our, our V or our U, our, I'm just gonna write velocity, right? Uh, the speed, we're just gonna write speed, speed is. So we can say, we can say this is the same thing as saying. So one over one, right? Times. So our volume is 0 0.29, one meter uh, cubed, so meter squared. This will be 7.85 times 10 to the power of negative three, right? So this gives us, so 0 0.21 over 7.85 times 10 to the power of negative three, 37.05 meters per second. Now, what did we say if to show that we have to round to 37 meter per, meters per second? We need to round it to one more significant figure. So one more SF. So that will be, so our speed is 37.1 meters per second. So what is our mark? So we get one mark for the final answer. We get one mark for using density right and uh, the formula when, to work out the volume one mark for getting the area that's three one mark for taking t as one for understanding the relationship which is the hardest part and one two three four yeah that's the four marks all right so question part b part i determine the rate at which the momentum of the seawater has changed by the pump so we know P equals MV, right? We know this. So M is what? It, you, you can go back. So M is 300. M is 300. What about the velocity? We know the velocity is, uh, the velocity we have to use is 37.1. That gives us what? That gives us 1130 kilogram meters per second. Now, is this the right amount of significant figures that we need to use? It's not because we're using, you can see over here, it's two significant figures here. You see here, two significant figures here. I'm just gonna do it again, so two significant figures here. So we have to round to two sig fig. If we let's do it standard form, standard form, so that'll be what? So that'll be 1.11 times 10 to the power of four, right? Kg meters per second. Don't forget the units. So this will be 1.1 times 10 to the power of four, kg meters per second is our final answer so it's always you should always round because the standard form is better it's safer so this is and this is why so this is the final answer and one more for using p equals mv projecting water from the pipe causes a force to be exerted on the pump right explain the direction of the force on the pump so what happens when the fire so if you go back here you can see over here that when the fire, the, the pump is exerting a forward, right? It's exerted, so if I change the color of this, so we're exerting a forward pressure, right? A for us uh, not pressure, a forward pushing force to the water, right? So by definition, by the Newton third law, we know that the water, so just the water exerts, so this water over here exerts a, a backwards motion, right? To the pump. So, so this is by Newton third law, right? So an equal and opposite, so it should be equal as well, sorry. So all we have to say, all we have to state is, we have to state that, let's say that simply we have to write fire boat, so the, the fire boat, pump, you know, the pump there, exerts, exerts a forward, forward, a forward, forward, Forward pushing force, right? This is this is obvious, but we need to always state it. it's very uh, very important to state forward pushing force to the water, to the water. Okay, so that's our first mark, right? So that's our first mark. So we have to state that. So 
due to Newton's third law. Newton's third law. What happened then? What did we talk about? We said that the water exerts, and this is the important part, exerts an equal, so equal and backward force, the opposite force. So the, the opposite of forward is backward, right? Backward, backward force, what to where? To the pump, to the pump. So what, what, what are the two marks? So one mark is the first line. One mark is that water exerts an equal and backward force because of Newton's third law. So that's our two marks. All right. So initially the jump is turned off. So this is just uh, uh, for, you know, this just, this is not part of the question. I've, I've brought this here to help us understand the question. So initially the pump is turned off and the fire boat moves forward through the water at constant speed. The boat's engine provides a constant forward force. When the pump is turned on, the water is projected forward, right? So obviously you can see here, the water is being projected forwards. Okay, so we know that. What else do we know? We know they're telling us that the fireboat slows to a lower constant speed. Explain why, explain why the boat now has a lower constant speed. Okay, so what do we say of this? So, so we, we know initially, right? Initially, initially what, what's happening with the boat? Initially, there's what? Initially, there's engine, the forward, the forward force of the engine. I'm going to write engine. And then there's the drag force, right? Initially, drag force, right? So there's, so, so we can say initially, you can write initially, initially what? Initially, speed, speed is constant, right? Because, then it can be constant because, because, the drag force, right? The drag force of the water, drag force, force equals what? Forward force, right? Initially, that's what's happening, right? Forward force. What about afterwards? So after turning on, so what? So after they turn on the pump, right? You can see after they turn on the pump, what happens then? So after we turn on the pump, so after, after turning on the pump, what happens then? After turning on the pump, what happens then? Now we have, all right, now what do we have? Water is projected forward, so there is a force backwards onto the boat, right? Of the water pump. So this we just write the water, the water, so water, I just write the, the force that we, we described earlier, the, the backward force, the water exerts an equal and backward force on the pump, right? I'm just write the, yeah, the water, I'm just write water. This is from the, obviously, the pump, right? So I'm just gonna pump. Okay, so after turning the pump, what happens then? What happens then? The resultant force, right? So you can see here now the resultant form is backward, right? The resultant, the resultant force, the resultant force is backwards, is backwards, right? Is backwards. So the boat slows down. The boat, slows down, right? The boat slows down. Yeah, that, that's really important. That's our, that's our second mark. What, what next? So at the end, they're telling us to explain why the boat now has a lower constant speed. Now, when do we have a lower constant speed? That's when we have the balance forces, right? So that means, so that means what? So we can say at the end, so, so we know that this drag force must now decrease, right? because we have an additional water pump over here, so the drag force must, must decrease. So that means, so drag, so drag force is decreased, not must, so is decreased, so this is what actually happens, is decreased, because of what? Because as the boat slows down, right? Because there, there is a resultant negative force, the boat slows down, as the boat slows down, until you have balance forces until until there are balance force there are balanced forces so which results in what which results in the said so it results in our lower constant speed that we're talking about in a lower constant constant speed that we're talking about all right, 
So the three marks are. So we're talking about speed is constant because drag force equals forward force. Then saying that the resultant force is backwards, so the, the boat slows down. That's the second mark. Third third mark is the drag force is being released. Sorry, is being decreased as the boat slows down. So that's that's why we that's why. So so it's, it's basically all of the sentence. Just understanding that we have the lower speed because the drag force has to be decreased as the boat slows down, which results in the lower constant speed. All right, so that's our three marks. Question number fifteen. So in a bungee jump, the bungee jumper falls from a high platform while attached to the elastic cord. The cord is also attached to the platform. So you can see over here, you can see over here, the cord slows the bungee jumper down so that he comes to rest before reaching the ground. The fall can be divided into three stages. The jumper is in free fall, so that's stage one. Uh, and then it starts to stretch. The cord is stretching until the acceleration of the jumper decreases to zero. So the A, A equals zero at the end. Of stage two, stage three is when it con uh, it continues to stretch until the jumper is momentarily at zero. So this is this is v at zero. I'm just you know it's completely at rest. All right, so that's fine. That's the three stages. So they're saying explain in terms of the work done how the kinetic energy of the bungee jumper changes during the three stages of the fall. So if I if I just take this, so you can easily understand. So if I just take this, copy this, here we go, and then, all right, so if I put this here, it'll be easier to, okay, well, mm. all right, so let me get this get rid of this, and if I just do this, try again, so I want to copy and paste. Yeah, here we go. All right, so we can split it up. Uh, we can split up these six marks into three stages, right? So all we have to do. So what's happening with stage one? So what's happening stage one? We know that stage one, right? We can say so stage one. So so we can be so stage one, right? So in stage one, we can state that as the jumper is falling, the ek you can write the kinetic energy is increasing, right? We can say that, right? The, the kinetic energy is increasing. What about stage two? We, we were told that the acceleration is decreasing, but so but the EK is still increasing, right? Because it's still it's still accelerating downward. It, it, towards the end, they tell us, right? That until the acceleration of jumper decreases to zero, so that's at the end, right? That's the, at the end of stage two. So until then, so it's EK is still increasing, right? But at a slower rate. So EK, so EK is, is increasing, but not as fast as a EK1, right? What about EK at stage three? They tell us that acceleration decreases to zero. So that means that now anything below this, that means that our kinetic energy is decreasing, right? Because the acceleration has, it has stopped. The acceleration has stopped, right? So that means that, and also the velocity uh, at the end is momentarily at zero. So we can say EK, EK is decreasing. So that's our first three things that we can talk about in these three stages, right? Because they talk about how the kinetic energy changes. So we, we have already visualized what's going to happen in these three stages, right? Now, what about the second part in terms of work done? Okay, so we can write, so we can write over here. So e, we can write EK, right? Or kinetic energy is increasing, right? Is increasing, increasing as, as velocity is increasing, right? Increasing as, as V increases, then velocity is increasing. This is what? This is due to, so this is the part we get second. This is due to, this is due to the fact that, due to the fact, what what's happening? Well, we know, we know that the cord is not being stretched here, right? That means that our strain energy is zero, right? And uh, fact that fact that work is being done. Work is being done. But what what other work can be done uh, can be done here? It's our gravitational potential energy, right? MGH, right? So GPE, right? GPE, right? And we can say and our elastic or our strain energy is zero, right? It's not being stretched. The cord is not being stretched. So what about stage two? So stage two, so EK is increasing, is increasing, but at a slower rate compared to stage one. So increasing at a slower rate. Why is that? Why is that? Because, because, because elastic energy is increasing right we know this 
because it's being stretched now, isn't it? It's in, it's increasing, right? Because bungee cord is being stretched, right? So so that that's what you can say. It's increasing because due to so you can say due to the bungee cord being stretched, due to the bungee cord, the bungee cord cord being uh, being stretched. Okay. What about state three? So state three now. This is our, our our final stage. Stage three. What can we talk about this? We can say the E K is decreasing, right? We can say E K is decreasing, right? So E K is Canadian is decreasing, right? We have talked about this, right? Why so? That's because there that the accession has come to zero, right? Accession has come to zero. So and we we let's talk about. It's momentarily at rest. When does that happen, right? When does that happen? That's when velocity is zero, or when both, or he comes to so you can he comes to rest. He comes to rest. So this is this is when this is the max. So when it's here, right? What what's happening here? This is the max max E L. It can be ever be right max E L. This is the maximum strain that you can put on the bungee cord. He comes to rest because because of what? Because we know. Because it's the max, it's max so E L so elastic uh, energy, electric energy is the same as our E grab so our G P E right the same same they're the same that's why it's at completely at rest right that's why but E K is still you know this is at D now E K is the energy and kinetic energy is decreasing so these are six marks so you can talk about so we talk about this so basically talking about the kinetic energy what's happening in these different stages and why that is. So in this case, this is the following statement uh, after that. So in this case, so you can say uh, EL is increasing because the bungee cord is stretched. At the end, he comes to rest because EL equals E graph. So those are six marks that you need to look for. All right, question number 16A. A steadily increasing tensile force was applied to a sample of titanium alloy. A sample had an original length of 40.0 uh, centimeters. Okay, and diameter 5.05 millimeters. Okay, state a suitable measurement, measuring in, measuring instrument to measure the diameter of sample. So you can see here, this is a, a hundredth of a millimeter. So the only suitable measuring instrument is a micrometer, meter screw, screw gauge. All right, I think I've spelled it wrong, but all right, let me just try again. Um, yeah. All right, so this is the final answer. This is it. okay. The graph shows how stress varied uh, with strain for the example for the uh, for the sample. Okay, cool. Determine the young modulus of the sample. Now, how do you do that? The young modulus of the sample. We know the young modulus is what. So, so we just write. So it's young, young modulus is what. Is stress over strain, right? Stress over strain right so let's do that so this is when the, the the graph is linear so that's until you can you can see over here that's around here this is the point where it's linear so you see this is this is in megapascal so remember that so that's 10 to the power 6 and you can see over here this is the strain so this is 0 0.0.005 0 .005. so that's the point over here so if i go all the way up here and across, and if I just yeah, so it's it's there there, six hundred. All right, so we can use those two values, right? We can we can use those two values. So that is what that is what. So we can say six hundred times ten to the power six all over zero point zero zero. 5 equals, so this will be 1.2 times 10 to the power of 11 Pascal, right? So you get two points for using this, you know, using the triangles, so using these two, you know, drawing lines. So you get one mark for that and triangle, and you get one mark for uh, rounding and one mark for the answer itself. So that is the answer. All right. The sample broke, the sample broke at, at, at point B. Determine the force required the force required to break the sample, right? So we know that that 
what do we know? We know the stress is force over area, right? Stress is force over area, right? The breaking stress. So let's look at the breaking stress. So if you go over here, this is B, right? So this is around about over here. So if, if I was to use the blue line, you're here. So this is around this point over here. Now this point, so this is 1300. Now this, if this point is 1300, so this must be 1280, right? This is 1280. So the breaking stress here, and if we were to go down, so yeah, this is, yeah, that's all we need to know, right? Breaking stress is 1280. So this is, so we need to find the breaking stress. So F equals, F equals A. So we know the breaking stress is, you know, it's 1280 times 10 to the power of 6. Now the area is pi r squared, right? Pi r squared, but we don't know, you know, we, we haven't worked out what pi r squared is. Okay, so we can do that, right? You can see over here, we said that this is our diameter. So our diameter is 5.05 .05 times 10 to the power of negative 3, right? So that's our diameter, right? So we know that this is 10 to the power of my meters. So if we go back down here, so so R would be 5.05 .05 times 10 to the power of minus 3, just divided by 2, right? Because diameter divided by 2. All right, so we know what F is now. So F is 1, 2, 8, 0 times 10 to the power of 6 times pi times 5.05 .05 times 10 to the power of negative 3 all over 2 squared. Okay, so when you put this in calculus, so 1, 2, 8, 0 times 10 to the power of 6 times pi times um, bracket 5.05 .05 times 10 to the power of 3 over 2 whole squared. This gives us 2, 5, 6, 3, 7, point nine. Newton. So what did we say before? We should do a standard form. So this will be 2.56 times 10 to the power of 4 Newtons, right? Okay, now is this is this is this uh, is this consistent? No, it's not. It's not consistent. So the consistent would be 2.6 times 10 to the power of 4 Newtons. So the, the final answer is this, this is the final answer. So you got one mark for right. Oh no, sorry. Uh, you got one mark for writing the final answer. So that's one mark. You got one mark for using pi r squared, uh, and one mark. Sorry, one mark for using this. You know, working out, working out. One mark for using, and one mark for stating uh, the formula as stress. All right. So part I I I. The graph sh uh, below shows a linear section of the stress strain graph. Okay. I show that the area under this graph represents the work done per unit volume. Uh, so let's look at this. So this is so the area. So if we look at this, the area. So the area is it's a half times stress times strain. So half times stress times strain. So this is what half times what half times force over area times uh, delta x over x strain. All right. What else do we know? What else do we know? This is the same thing as saying what. So if we were to combine this, so this would be half f delta x, right? times what's left one over a not a sorry it's not a a x okay what do we know about this what do you know about this we know that we know that a times x so this is uh, an area times the length area times the length is a volume so this is a volume and we know that a half f delta x is the same thing as our uh, e delta uh, our elastic energy so we know that this this is the same thing as saying a delta w over v right so that's work done per unit volume so before this we had e l all over volume so this is the same thing as saying work done per unit volume so we got one mark for using one mark for using this and this is one mark so this is all one mark and then one mark for getting to this stage and it's separating the two variables the two uh, separating them and one mark at the end. One mark for getting you know these uh, these two using the formula. All right, the area under any stress strain graph represents the work done per unit volume. Okay, estimate the amount of work done required to break the titanium alloy sample. So basically, we need to work out what we need to work out the because we know area is what so we know to, to work out area. It's so sorry the workout. What work done is area equals work over volume, right? So del W I is area times volume, right? We already know what the volume is, right? 
in order to know what the volume is. Right, okay, so it's yeah, okay, so let's the so what do we need what we need to find the area of underneath the graph? So what we can do is just use just use these big squares. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, um, twenty one, twenty two. 23 that's 23 so what else so 23 uh 23 what else can we say this is 23 20 23 so this is so this is you can see it this is here it goes from 0 to 10 so and it's, it's basically a, you know a triangle so that's 5 23 so this will be 28 28 so you know we're, we're saying all the way here to here that'll be 10 so we're going to use another color so this is you know, you can say this is a half, so this 28 and a half. All right, what else can you say this is? So we can use this now, this is, so this over here is uh, 29 and a half. So then we have 30 and a half. And then we have 31 and a half, 31 and a half. What else can you say? So this is, you can say this is around, this is around one as well, right? So you can see it over here. This is around one as well because it's like it's like a triangle going from here all the way to B. So this is around one. So it's a thirty-two and a half. So that's our final, you know, thirty-two and a half that we're saying uh, squares. So we can work out we can work out now the area just by working out the area of one square. So that's uh, two hundred times uh, obviously ten to the power six times um, zero point zero one. So we can go down there. You can go back down there. That will be so. This will be two hundred times ten to the power of six times zero point zero one. So we know this, right? Uh, so and we know there are thirty two of these. So times thirty two of these. So we know that. So we, what about the volume now? We could go back here. Uh, in the beginning of the thing, it's it's they tell you that it's a uh, it's an original length of uh, forty centimeters. So it's zero point four meters, and we know yeah. So volume is 0 0.4 times obviously the mm, wait wait or is it the all right so delta w is area times volume so this is the same as 32.5 times uh this so 30.5 so that'll be times 200 times 10 to the power 6 times 0 0.01 so now that's the length times the area so that would be so this would be times by 0 0.4 you work out here beforehand yeah we did it's pi r squared so it's that all right so now there were four times two times 10 to the power of negative five Yeah, so that gives us, so that gives us, so when you put this in the calculator, it's 32.5 times all of this, so 200 times 10 to the power 6, times 10 to the power 1, times 0 0.4, this is the, the original length, and then times by the area, so this is the area, this is the area, so this is pi r squared we got earlier, uh, and so we'll get 520 joules. All right, so 520 joules is the answer, 520 joules is the answer, so the final answer, so we get one mark for the answer, one mark for uh, using finding out the volume this is the volume and this is the length times pi squared this is the area that we worked out and one mark one mark for being in range and one mark for using the squares right the range is for here is 500 plus or minus 20 joules so we're right on it that's fine so that's the final answer so let's go down to question number 17. So a uh, mass M is held in equilibrium by strings attached to clamp uh, stands. The force meter it records the force F in the upper string. In the upper string, uh, the force in the horizontal is P, uh, is P, and uh, yeah, uh, the force, the angle made is theta, so the theta. The force meter allows force to be measured by Hooke's law. Okay, the extension uh, inside the spring allows strength force to be used for scale. When a force applied is 15, the spring extension is about 0 0.8. It just shows stiffness. So we know that force equals k delta x 
the same thing as saying. So if we want to work out what k is, k equals f over delta x. That is 15 over 8.0. That is 1.875. And what did we say? Uh, this is in Newton uh, centimeters. And what do we say about uh, showing that? So it has to be one more thing to figure. So k equals 1.9 Newton centimeters minus one. So easy, this is the answer. And this is the working out using f equals kx. All right, so when m is equal to 0 0.55 kilograms, uh, the value of p is uh, 8.5. So what I'll do is I will bring this over here so it's easy to see. So copy this. I'll put it here, paste, all right, so you can use it. All right, so they're saying M is 0 0.5, so this is, you know, um, sorry, this is the force here is 0 0.55 G, the so weight, you know, this force is 0 0.5, so we have, we have R over here, right? We have R over here, right, reaction force. Uh, they're saying that the P, the value of P is 8.5 Newtons when this is, uh, when this is, when, m is equal to 0 0.55, so we need to calculate the value of zero and the extension of the spring. All right, so how do we do this? So first, what we can do is, we need to find a couple of things. We need to find, so this is, so if we were to enlarge this, so we need to find, so this over here, this direction over here will be what? This will be F sine theta, right? This is F sine theta, right? This is the, no, 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 sorry, not F sine theta. This will be F cos theta, F cos theta in this direction. So this will be, and in the upper direction, that will be F sine theta. So we know this, okay, that's good. So F sine theta is our R, and R is equal to 0 0.5, that's good. Uh, what else do we know? So we can use that information. So F sine theta, we know, in the upper direction is the same thing as 0 0.55 G. And you know, F cos theta, we know is 8.5, okay? So we can use this information to find out what theta is, right? We can divide them, we can divide both of them, right? So we'll get, so F will cancel out, right? And F will cancel out uh, and both F. So we'll be left with tan theta equals, so 0 0.55 G all over 8.5, right? So we can do that. So there'll be 0 0.55 G all over 8.5. Okay, that's, that's good. What else can we do with this? We can do theta equals then tan inverse of 0 0.55 G so G is obviously 9.81, so uh, 8.5. So when we do that, so inverse, so we get 32.4 degrees, right? It, because they tell us, uh, so it, you know, it's always good to run to one decimal place. So we're just going to 32.4. So we can we can already write here, this is 32.4, 32.4 degrees. Okay, cool. So now we need to work out the extension. So the, the way we uh, do the extension is we know that it's, okay, so, the way we do this is now, now what do you do? We know that, we know that the force, right? We know what, the, what F is now, right? If we know F, we know F sine theta, right? Or F cos theta, it doesn't matter. F sine theta is what? F sine theta is what? Is equals 0 0.55 G, right? So F will be 0 0.55 G all over. We know what the angle is sine 32.4. So 0.455 times 9.81 divided by sine 32.4 is 10.07. So we know this, right? So this is the 10.07. This is 10.07 Newton. And using the previous equation, F equals K delta X, right? K delta X, we know what? We know what? You know, so F is 10.07 equals the K. We use the, uh, the, the previous value we found out, so 1.88. So this is 1.88. That we can round it up to so 1.88 so we use 1.88 or 1.875 it's fine as well 1.88 delta x so delta x equals 10.07 all over 1.88 it gives us 5.4 centimeters so the extension of the spring is 5.4 centimeters so you get answer you get uh, you get marks for you get marks for one mark for stating one mark for stating the weight equals 0 0.5 g we got one mark for using uh, the, the components so uh, the vertical and the horizontal components of forces one mark for getting the angle so that's uh, three already that's four and one mark for getting using f equals kx for understanding that we need to do f equals kx from the previous equation one mark uh, so that's one two three four five 
and one more for the extension itself, the final answer. Okay, so that's that question number 18. So a spherical, a spherical polystyrene bead is immersed in oil. Okay, so the bead has a diameter of 4.10 to the power of 3. Okay, cool. The bead is released and moved upward through uh, all the oil at constant velocity. Complete the force body diagram. Okay, we can do that. So that is, so that is, that is now, so we have the weight, right? We have weight and we also have drag, also have drag, right? As it's going down. All right, so that's fine. So what about part B? So show that the upthrust, uh, upthrust, upthrust, the oil exerts is about 2.1 times 10 to the power minus 4 newtons. Okay, so what can we do about this? We know that, that the upthrust equals weight right now, right? Upthrust equals weight. So we know weight is what? Weight is mg, right? How, do we know what the mass is? We don't, right? We don't. We need to work it out, right? So we know density is mass over volume. So m equals density times volume, right? So we can do that. So how do we work out the volume of a sphere? So it's 4 over 3 pi r cubed. We know that the diameter is 4 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So the radius will be 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters. So the the volume is 4 over 3 pi times 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 cubed. So that's our volume that we're going to use to work out the density. Okay, so what can we do with this? So we can do it. So I'll just copy it. I don't want to write it again. So copy it. So our m, so we can work. So m will be, so m will be 930 multiplied by the, so if I just shorten it, so this over here. So 4 over 3 times pi times the 2 times 10 to the power of minus 3 whole cubed. So that's our mass, right? That's our mass, okay? And we times this, we times this by g. So so our weight or our upthrust rather is equal to our weight, which is mg. So it's 930 times 4 over 3 pi times 10, 2 times 10 to the power of minus 3 cubed times 9.81. So this is equal to, so this is 3, this is also 3, so 930 divided by 3 pi times 10 to the power of 3, okay. So 3.057 times 10 to the power of negative 4 newtons. So we remember to show that something is 3.1, we have to go one more, one more SF. So that's going to be u equals, that's going to be 3. Point, what? So 3. Point, what? 3. what? 3.06. 3.06 times 10 to the power of negative 4 newtons is our final answer. No, again. So this is our final answer. All right, that's that. So what about C? C says, uh, the Stokes law uh, shows how viscous drag, viscous drag on a sphere related to its velocity through a fluid. Stokes law is only valid if the bead is moving sufficiently slowly through the oil. Say the reason for this condition. So if we have uh, the bead, right? And if the bead is going everywhere, right? Uh, and it's not going straight linearly, we can't work out terminal velocity. We can't work out anything, right? We can't work out anything. We can't work out, we, we can't work out anything because the viscous drag is, you know, it's not constant. It's moving all over the place. So we we can state that the flow the flow must be laminar. Flow must be laminar so that so that it doesn't cause any interference. So that so that there aren't there can't be any there can't be any interferences. So that's why. Alright? Alright, so part II. So for Stokes law to be valid, this this valid the speed of the bead through the oil must be less than vr. So they're given the form of vr. Okay. So deduce whether Stokes law can be applied. Okay. So how do we do this? So this is the how do we do this? So we need to work out what we need to work out the normal velocity, right? Using the uh, uh, the Stokes law. So we know f equal. This is the drag force. This is this is uh, drag force, which is F, which is 6 pi, or the viscosity coefficient V. 
that's equal to what? Drag is equal to what? U minus W, right? Up thrust minus uh, up the weight. So we can write that. So what can we do with this? We can do 6 pi R V equals. So we know what up thrust is 3.06. We worked it out, right? 3.06 times 10 to the power of what? Minus 4 minus. What about the weight? Did they tell us the weight? Look, they tell us the weight. So 1.05 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So we know this. Okay, what about what about V? We, we need to work out V is right? Only normal V, normal V. And then we can work out what VR is. So V is, so this is so 3.06 times 10 to the power of minus 4 minus 1.05 times 10 to the power of negative 5 all over all over what so 6 pi what is r if you remember before we said r is what r is 2 so you can see over here r is 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 so we can write here so it's uh, 2 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 times 4.9 times so this is the viscosity coefficient times squared okay to the power minus 2 so so putting calculus so 3.06 times 10 to the power minus 4 minus 1.05 times 10 to the power minus negative 5 6 pi times 2 times 10 to the power negative 3 times 4.9 times 10 to the power minus 2 gives 0 0.160 meters per second okay what about vr now vr let's look at vr now so vr we can just use that so 10 times so we can 10 times what's the coefficients is 4.9 times 10 to the power of negative 2 we used earlier right all over density of oil so density so you go back up here so density is sorry density is with uh, 930 right so this is the density 930 so this is 930 times diameter of the bead diameter was so the radius was 2 so the diameter will be 4 times 10 to the power of negative 3 so this is 0 0.1 32 meters per second so they're saying this for stokes law the speed of the bead through the oil which was, we just find out we just found out this must be so v must be less than vr that's the condition so this is the condition to, for it to be valid now is this condition met you can see here so v is this and vr is this so you can see here that v is greater than vr right VR that means what that means that the Stokes law cannot be applied so Stokes law cannot be applied in this scenario so cannot be applied because because of this so that's our final answer so you can see over here so V, v so this is our final statement working out VR over here and working out uh, V over here that's our three marks and working out that we need to do d equals u minus w for the drag force to work out the terminal velocity the sorry, the speed of the bead through the oil so that's our four marks and obviously we're working out here is our our fifth mark so that is the end of the video uh i hope you enjoyed it and uh please be sure to check out the description for weekly email uh newsletter i will i will i'm going to add and uh, I'll put the solution soon on the Discord server, so please be sure to check it out. So I'll just write here, so Discord, Discord server and link and email newsletters. So it's weekly, weekly, I'm gonna try to be weekly. And I'll see you guys in the next one.